Every success you've had began with a great opportunity. Now, here's another one. Make your next career move with a degree from University of Maryland Global Campus. Choose from more than 125 degree and certificate programs featuring online courses, faster onboarding, and no-cost digital resources in place of most textbooks. Get started on your undergraduate or graduate degree or certificate online. No application fee through May 31st. Learn more at umgc.edu slash podcast. Certified to operate by Chev. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2119. Subconscious Productivity. Four Ways Your Brain Can Make You More Productive by Laura Stack of theproductivitypro.com. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, and welcome to another bonus Sunday episode where I share an article from one of the other podcasts in our network that I think will add some value for you here. Today's post comes from Optimal Living Daily, our very first show where articles covering all different aspects of personal development are read to you every day. You can find and listen to Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this. And with that, here's my brother Justin with the post and his commentary as we optimize your life. Subconscious Productivity, Four Ways Your Brain Can Make You More Productive by Laura Stack of theproductivitypro.com. It's well established that like an iceberg, only a small percentage of a person's mind is above the water, active and aware at any particular time. I'm not going to spout the overused claim that you use only 10% of your brain on average. The majority of your brain is, in fact, used to control automatic and autonomous functions like breathing and heartbeat as well as to process the flood of incoming sensory information you deal with constantly. Besides, this is the mind I'm talking about here as apart from the brain, the consciousness that the electrochemical reactions inside your head somehow generate as something above and beyond mere physical being. The subconscious mind, the majority of our cognition that hides beneath the veneer of the conscious mind, may not control us overtly, but it certainly casts a large vote toward all our thoughts, feelings, and actions. This is the domain where we store every memory and form all attitudes, prejudices, and opinions. Here, dreams are manufactured as the brain sorts through feelings, impressions, and memories. It's also where inspiration and creativity arise to later strike like bolts from the blue. The subconscious never stops working. It just keeps trying things out, good and bad, fitting together idea fragments in novel ways to see if they synergize and presenting you with the results when they somehow do. The results can be positive or negative, and sometimes terrifying or inspiring in their implications. But your subconscious doesn't have to control you. It's not a field sprouting random weeds. It's more like a garden where what you plant, deliberately or otherwise, matures in due time to influence your behavior and outlook on life. As so many have pointed out, you really do reap what you sow with the subconscious mind. If you sow negativity, you'll reap uncertainty and pain. Sow positivity? and you'll mine inspiration and creativity from the depths of your subconscious, resulting in productivity and success. I won't claim what you want will magically appear just because you think good thoughts, but combine a positive attitude with action, sometimes massive action, and it will happen. It's not even hard to do. In fact, your worst hindrance may be your own tendency to complain, feel sorry for yourself, or expect the worst. Rather than accept your lot in life, implement these four methods to harness your subconscious to boost your productive success. Number one, ban negative self-talk. Remember when you were learning things as a kid and you'd guide yourself through a process by repeating it out loud? That never really stops, it just goes underground. Even as adults, we maintain a constant inner monologue. Sometimes it becomes negative when things go wrong and we convince ourselves we're useless and worthless. Next time you find yourself thinking such a thing, shut it down and replace it with something positive. Over time, this will become second nature. Side note, don't let your own negative thoughts get you down and don't let others' negative thoughts get you down either. If you're letting others' opinions get in the way of your productivity, maybe it's time to stop caring so much what other people think. Number two, practice daily affirmations. Tell yourself out loud you can succeed and your subconscious will believe it and allow the seed to take root. Even the simplistic every day and every way I'm getting better and better can help. I'm fond of Al Franken's famous Stuart Smalley quote, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. Number three, take time out to relax. People get their best ideas in the oddest places, often when they're not even trying. 
Mine usually come to me in the shower or bath or while walking my dog. I keep my phone handy to add these thoughts to my task list. Some people get them in bed just before falling asleep. Thomas Edison used to hold a coin between his knees, relax until he lost control of his muscles and it fell into a tin tray below, and then write out everything in his mind at that moment. You can do something similar, keeping a pen and notebook or voice recorder close at hand at all times for those sudden inspirations. Number four, consciously decide what you want right now. Write out your goals and dreams. It doesn't matter if you type it on a computer or write it longhand, as long as you save the list and review it regularly. This plants more positive seeds in your subconscious. Jumpstart your mind. This is a bare bones introduction to the topic of harnessing the subconscious. Many a book has been written on it. But these four simple tips will allow you to more easily till the fertile garden of your imagination and plant the right kind of seeds to help you thrive rather than die on the vine. It's not difficult, but you do have to sow what you sincerely want to reap. You just listened to the post titled Subconscious Productivity, Four Ways Your Brain Can Make You More Productive by Laura Stack of theproductivitypro.com. So you open Google Chrome on your phone, you're hunting for a super rare first edition vinyl of a band you're obsessed with when you're supposed to be working. But this site you tapped on seems pretty shady. And Daryl from IT just jumped up from his desk. Oh no, he's coming your way. It's a good thing built-in malware protection keeps you safe and sound. Not from Daryl, though. Sorry. There's no place like Chrome. Download Google Chrome on your phone. Thousands of spring deals just arrived at your Nordstrom Rack Store. Save big on the season's best new arrivals from Adidas, Nike, Madewell, Steve Madden, Kurt Geiger London, and more, starting at only $30. Seriously, great brands, great prices. So rack your look for spring and get first dibs on the warm weather styles you want now, starting at just $30 at your Nordstrom Rack Store. Thank you to Laura, the Productivity Pro. For me, the toughest of these is banning negative self-talk because we often don't realize we're doing it and it can become a spiral of negativity that we don't realize we're in. Practices like meditation or journaling, mind dumping, that sort of stuff can definitely help with that. And Laura actually has a video linked in this post where she talks more about the case of letting other people's opinions get in the way of your productivity and how to stop caring so much about what other people think. I have the article I narrated linked in this episode's description in your podcast app and at oldpodcast.com so you can always find the blog post there and then check out that video. But that should do it for today. Thank you for being here and listening every day, including the weekends. And I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.